In this lesson, we'll go a bit further into getting the results you want the way you want them, as well as how to get more information about the system itself. Just as with SQL, you can add whatever filters you need to get the results you want. So you might well select values within a range, but perhaps only for fields in a document of a specified type, for reasons we've discussed earlier. You'd also likely build a corresponding index for your query. When results come back, you may well want them sequenced differently than they may be stored, so you can order your results by one or more fields in ascending or descending order, with each subsequent ordering in the list happening within the sequencing from the prior field. Again, as you'd expect from SQL. Where there are variances in the existence of a field, again because this is JSON, fields are not required, or in the value for a field being used for ordering, there is an inherent comparison sequence as shown. You'll see documents that are otherwise validly selected, but with missing or null values come up first, as this may be crucial information. The rest of the comparison sequence plays out in a logical fashion, as you see, including in the way that it handles multidimensional data embedded within your documents. Similar to system tables in a relational database, Catchbase stores system information in a series of system buckets within a common system namespace, so that this data is accessible by query. You select all or specified fields from one of a variety of different system buckets. Available system buckets include your list of key spaces, which is the internal term for what we normally call buckets, as well as your indexes, your nodes, completed and active requests, your user info, and more. You filter appropriately, based on observing the document structures, to get the data you want, such as selecting data for a particular bucket by ID. As you'll see ahead, you can access all these names using tab completion in Query Workbench. Earlier, we mentioned you can grab the ID of any document from its metadata. The metadata for any document is accessible directly in a nickel query by using the meta function, which returns five values as an object. The CAS, or check and set value, which is used to support optimistic locking through the SDK. An expiration, or TTL, time to live value, for documents that have been configured to automatically expire. There may be various flags added by specific SDKs. You'll have the document ID, or key, whichever term you prefer, but here it's listed as ID, as well as an internal type identifier, which will commonly be set as JSON. Note, though, that this type identifier in the metadata is different from the type field we've suggested adding to your own documents to support query filtering. Let's take a look at some of this over in the Couchbase UI. At the moment, I only have one bucket deployed, Couch Music 2, and in my instance, I only have one currently deployed index, the primary index. These demos will be a bit more interesting with more data and indexes, so I'm going to go over to my settings view, go to sample buckets, and deploy the travel sample data set. Over in my buckets view, I now have travel sample available with this number of items. I also have a whole series of indexes, though, that import along with travel sample. I want to go back to my query view, though, and take a look at how we can access all of this via nickel queries, meaning we could get all of this data via the SDK. So take a look at tab completion. If you haven't found it already, I can tab to select the word select. And I want to select all fields from, now let's take a look at these buckets in the system namespace. We have a whole series of them, like key spaces, which would be the names of our buckets, key space being the internal use name. We have our indexes, we have user info, the number of items here. I'm actually going to back this up, and I want to take a look first at our indexes. Go ahead and execute this. We see a series of JSON objects come back. We could also look at them in tabular form. But I see, for example, I have an index named Def Airport Name. And yes, if I went over to my indexes view, there we have Def Airport Name as well. Other system data I could access might be 
active requests. Now, active requests is a query that is continuously executed as part of query monitoring by the system itself to grab statistical data about current performance on the system. And I might also look up key spaces, put this in tabular form, and you see that we have the two buckets that are currently deployed on my instance. Now these being queries, I could filter, for example, only where the ID Couch Music 2. The point here is that artifact names within the system, like Couch Music 2, and even field names from documents, like country code and address.countrycode, are also available in tab lookup. Those come from the work that's done to maintain the bucket insights view. So I'll select Couch Music 2 here, run the query, and as you might expect, I get back only data for that bucket. Now separately, I want to go over to the documents and examine this idea of metadata. I'm going to open my first user profile document and notice that we can bring up our document metadata here, corner, and we get our ID, revision, expiration, flags, and type, just as we talked about on the slide. I'm going to grab this first ID and copy it out so I can cancel my way out of this view, go back to my query, and now I want to select my metadata, and I'll give it a more usefully named key in the resulting object of meta, from Couch Music 2, but I only want metadata for the key that I pulled out of the documents view. Go ahead and execute that, and we see the data come back here in, again, tabular form or JSON form, whichever you prefer to display here. The larger point here being that all of this information is available to you at any point from the SDK. In fact, a broader point to be made here is everything you see happening in the Couchbase UI is accessible via REST API. Or in the case of live information like query monitoring and so on, it's available to you via nickel. So what have you learned here? Well, you can add any relevant filters you need to a query, any number, to narrow the values within a range and perhaps narrow the query to a particular document type if you're using this technique in your data model. You can order your results by one or more fields in ascending or descending order. You can query system data through these system buckets, including your list of available buckets, your indexes, your users, your active queries, and more. Tab completion and query workbench lets you easily look up system bucket names, as well as your current bucket names and a whole lot more as we saw in the demo. And you can access the metadata for any document directly within Nickel, including the document ID, any time to live, check and set value, internal type, and SDK flags. In this lab, you'll work further with selecting just the data you want and seeing how your queries line up against available indexes. And of course, we encourage you to play around, go in and create some more indexes, add, drop, twist them to your will, have some fun. Next up, we'll look at data aggregation, distinct values within a query, wildcard searches, and covering indexes. Come on back.